Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So, yeah. So, I was saying that my cases are politically motivated. And I'm giving you an example of a situation whereby you have reconciled with the client, with the complainant, and yet the case is still going on. Why should the case be going on when the complainant has actually withdrawn? Why? It simply means there is somebody that is behind who is pulling his strings here and there, which I feel is not good. And I am here to complain, to say, really, this is not good. This is not good. I've, at least I've even reconciled with the client, with the complainant. Why are you still pushing the case? Another example is whereby, you know, you are convicted, you are fined, and all of a sudden somebody comes up and they are appealing against you being fined. The question is, what do you want? What is the motivation? You want to see me in prison. Where I am, I have, a, I have a strong feeling and belief that there is somebody who wants to see me in prison. And honestly speaking, that is not very good. Imagine when you are moving around, you are moving around and you are feeling that you are tagged, you know, that, or you are, you are earmarked for prison. Imagine that you are moving around and you have this feeling that somebody wants to see you in prison. I don't, I am not a happy man. I'm not a happy man. And really I move, I do what I do, but I don't feel good because I feel, you know, there is a heavy hand. There are people up there, politically, not what, what, politically, who wants to see me uh, in prison. And at the end of the day, I mean, I can reduce this to the UPND, to the ruling, to the ruling government. I can really attribute this to say the UPND government wants to see me in prison. Whoever is doing it, I don't know, but I can, because, but at the end of the day, whoever is doing it, he's drawing the energies uh, and the motivation from the ruling party. We know this. If the ruling party does not want to punish you, there is no way I would be going through what I'm going through. So most of you, my brothers and sisters, especially some of you who are in the UPND, who like to, to say, you know, hey, why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? I don't know. I mean, what you think about what I'm talking about. How do I work? No, work with UPND. How do I work with UPND? When UPND government wants to see me in prison. So I'm not happy on that one, on that, on, 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 on that score. But then, but then, of course, with all these things, it has also crippled me in terms of, you know, trying to make money. Trying to make money. It becomes very difficult. How do you make money when every week you are at court? And when you are not at court, you are sitting on the computer like this, you know, trying to, you know, prepare yourself for the next, for the next case. Yesterday, I slept at 02. Busy, I was busy looking at some court documents, preparing myself. This morning, I am working on something. And that's why I'm, I'm at home. I'm at home right now. I'm not in my office. So you be, it becomes very difficult. Even to do business, it becomes difficult. It becomes difficult. You know, when you are there, you are able to do, uh, you are able to, it's just different. 
You are able to move things, but I'm not able to do that. And as a result, I'm not making as much to even, you know, manage myself, to manage my home, to manage my, my children going to school. It is difficult. I am crippled. So this is why now I have said, well, let me just slow down on politics. Let me just slow down on politics. Because really, how can I go on with all these things going on? You know, some of you, you say, no, 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 you are a coward. No, I'm not a coward at all. I'm not a coward. I am just overwhelmed. I am overwhelmed. How can I do so many things with all that is, uh, that is uh, lumped on me? I'll talk about the UPND and my work, you know, um, uh, on the in the last segment. But first of all, I'm just giving you from a personal point of view so that you understand. So that you understand my situation. Sympathize with me. Don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Don't call me names. Some of you, no, 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 you have been paid and whatever, whatever. Here I am. Who is paying me? I wonder, you, because especially it is very easy for people to say, you have been paid, you have been paid. Who is paying me? UPND government, they are fighting to throw me in jail. How can they pay me? The, 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 the opposition, and I'm saying the opposition, all political parties, you know, including, you know, the PF and everything. They are looking at me to say, no, 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 this guy is with the UPND. That's, what, that's how they are looking at me. That is with the UPND. So I am that guy that is in between. One side is accusing you of being with, uh, you know, uh, the other side. And the other side is also, I mean, working against you, fighting to, to throw you in jail. For whatever reason, because I don't think whatever they, they, they want me to go in jail is for whatever I could have done in the past. So this is my predicament. This is my predicament. I have not neglected the people of Zambia. I have not stopped being your public lawyer. It's just that I'm overwhelmed. And trust me, a lot of people say, no, it's difficult to trust Tayali because today he's on this side, tomorrow he's on this side. This is the tag that has been placed on me from the time that I entered public life. From the time that I entered public life, people always say, Tayali, you can't trust Tayali. Today is on this side. Tomorrow is on the other side. Yes, my brother. Confirmed indeed. Confirmed indeed. So 15 hours, we should be ready for you. I am most... Uh, yes, yes, indeed. Mm. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, uh, yes, the tag is Chilufa Tayali cannot be trusted. Today he's on this side. Tomorrow he's on this side. Unfortunately, you want to put me in a box. And this is what I've refused. I'm not going to be put in a box, in a red box. And I'm not going to be put in a green box. I'm not going to be put in whatever. Yellow, yellow is our color. Yes, I will stay Economic and Equity Party. I will not. I, I just, that I will not. And I will never assure anyone to say, yes, I'll be with you uh, uh, whether wrong or right. No. Because for me, the principle, the principle is about what is wrong and what is right. If the ruling party is right, I will agree with them. If they are not right, I will say so. Same with the UP, with the, with the opposition. When you, you know you are PF, you are PF, but when PF was in power, they were also arresting me. When I spoke the truth, when I spoke what they didn't like, they, were, they would arrest me. And I can't pretend that, no, if, P, if PF was in power, uh, I wouldn't have had this tag of going to prison because 
on their way out to a PF, they were also very serious to send me to jail. I think if PF had won, truth be told, if PF had won, I was going to go to prison. I would have gone to prison sooner, sooner than all this that is happening now. I was going to go to prison because the last time that I spoke against Kaderism, the last time that I spoke against President Edgar Lungu, PF was so serious that they wanted me inside. They detained me and they never even wanted to give me bond or bail. They never wanted. They never wanted to give me bail or bond. They never wanted to do that. I, I will never forget a Mutembo Nchito for coming to my aid. He was the only one who was courageous to come to my aid. None of these lawyers could come there, could come near that case. It was hot. Mutembo Nchito came in and fought his way. In spite of being a state lawyer, he was sitting at the, at the, at the office of the Inspector General of Police like a small boy asking for coins. He had to spend the whole day at the office of the Inspector General. They refused to see him and he said, I will not go. I will not go until I see the Inspector General and find that he was given audience. But nothing really came off. I still remained inside until I was brought to court. An habeas corpus was applied for. And that's when I was brought to court. And from there, I think, he, I think uh, that is when I was granted bail. So I cannot pretend, even some of you who, you know, the PF who seem to say, you know, like, I abo bachave chave, ire tuari na abo, tuari ya na abo. Ine tam tamuari ire na ine ba PF. Tamuari ire na ine ba PF. Tamuari ire na ine ba PF. And maybe that's how God has also also protected me, because if I had gotten, you know, the riches like some of these people. Maybe by now I would have been in problems. I remained true to justice. I remained true to good governance. I remained true to who I am. To who I am. I remained true. Where I didn't agree, I didn't agree. And I said it. So even when you are blaming me, some of you like to say, Tehari ni PF, Tehari ni PF. You should go back. Haka inde yichile ma before 2021 general elections. I campaigned for him. I spoke for him. Because I realized that PF, PF uh, had grown too big headed. Had grown too big headed. I helped by UPND. I campaigned for by UPND. Today UPND is in power. On things that I had seen that they had done wrong, I had spoken out. The cases that are in court are because I spoke out on certain bad things. Certain things which I didn't agree with. And what did UPND do? They arrested me. And now they are fighting to send me to jail. My brothers and sisters, I, want, I don't want to pretend. It's not good. It's not good. So these are my challenges. This is me trying to be true to myself, trying to be true to what I believe in. And this is why you label me to say Tayali is not reliable because I stand my grounds. Even if now umpela, if you have given me something, if I don't agree with you, I'll tell you I don't agree with you. But either the PF or the UPND. You don't like that. And you don't like me for it. But I will continue being objective. I will continue being objective. I will try to be objective. Which brings me to the issue of the economy that is currently going on. The, the things that are currently going on. I really wish I could speak more often. I really wish I could engage in some of the debates that are currently going on in the country. 
I was doing it before I stopped. I was doing it before I stopped. Where I was telling you to say, look, we are going through economic challenges. We are going through economic challenges. But my position has always been the same. That the economic challenges that we are going through, they are global. As, you may, as much as you may not like that word. But they, it is just like that. The world at the moment is going through economic and economic recession. It is going through an economic recession where commodity prices are expensive in many parts of the world. Many parts of the world. Not only in Zambia. The challenges that we are having here are not because of Baaka in the not because of UPND. Even if PF was going to be in power, I say this objectively without favoring whoever or whatever, whatever, saying it as it is. Saying it as it is. I am not here to speak for HH. I mean, these are people that, uh, I mean, this is his government that wants me in prison. So surely, if I don't want to be objective, if it is not about objectivity, I would not speak this. But the truth of the matter is that the challenges that we are going through, the challenges that we are going through, they are not because of this government. They are not because of UPND. I know this is what many people want to hear. I know those who are politically aligned, this is what they, they want me to say. Well, well, well Akainde Ichirema is doing so bad. But at the same time, I'm not here going to say, no, Akainde Ichirema is doing so good. No. No. I'm not going to say Akainde Ichirema is doing so bad. I'm not going to say Akainde Ichirema is doing so, so good. No. I'm not going to say that. The basic principle is that at the moment the whatever we are going through if you are really an objective person you would scan around the global economy and you will see that a number of economies or if you like a number of countries are going through uh, stresses a number of economies are going through which country which country are you going to tell me which country is doing well because even, even Rwanda, you know, the fastest growing uh, uh, country, it has its, its share of problems. South Africa, one of the biggest economies in Africa, is having its challenges. Uh, Nigeria, you know, one of the big economies of, um, of, uh, of, of, of Africa, if not the biggest, I think it's the biggest economy in Africa, they're having challenges. They're having challenges. So, we need to be objective when we are talking about these issues. At the Sipo Isaac, stop lying here. You, you, Sipo, my brother, I'm, I want to be sober. I want to be sober because I'm speaking during the day. Do yourself a favor or anyone listening to me who is not agreeing with me, do yourself a favor and do a scan. Search the world economies, including the American economy for that matter. Including American economy for that matter. Go look at it. What is happening in America today? Today, Trump has put a, a, a Joe Biden under so much pressure, under so much pressure with Alewele Lapo. In America, we have Alewele Lapo. Why? Because uh, Joe Biden is facing serious economic challenges there. And he, Donald Trump is taking advantage of that. He's taking advantage of that. He's hammering the Democrats. He's hammering them like hell. And it is even likely that Donald Trump might come back as president of America. Why? Because of the challenges that are currently going on there. So, you, you can say whatever you want. You can say whatever you want. But the fact is that, at the moment, the challenges that we are having, they are a world problem. They are a global challenge that we are having. For a number of reasons, of course. For a number of reasons, and some of these reasons, it's the cli climate. 
the climate change has posed so much challenges in many countries. This drought that we are talking about around here is not only happening here in Zambia. It's happening in a number of areas. It is happening in many areas. Crops are not growing. Or there are diseases and whatever. There is a big problem. The world is faced with a number of challenges now. But because most of you, you are so short-sighted and very emotional, you like it when somebody tells you, these problems that you are facing, it's this one. These problems that you are facing, it's this one. But I can assure you, even if Edgar Lung was in power today, we would be having these problems. And from my point of view, it would have even been worse. Why? Because, it, because Edgar Lungu was being fought by the Western communities. The Western communities were fighting Edgar Lungu. And if he had won, they would have continued fighting him. And we would have had more problems. More problems. Haka Inde Ichilema is lucky. He is liked by the West. And so they are somehow helping him. But they can also only help him up to a certain extent. They can't give him more than what they have. And this is Africa. Hello, this is Africa. Don't forget that. If they have to give help to Zambia and, the, and there is Ukraine, they will take uh, aid to Ukraine. Ukraine is receiving so much money. Zelensky is receiving so much money. But even Zelensky has started complaining now. Even Zelensky started complaining because they are not giving him as much. And Russia is just waiting. He said, we will see how you, for how long uh, these people will keep on feeding you. You will soon starve to death. You may not understand the war between Russia and, and, and Ukraine. Russia would have wiped out uh, Ukraine easily. But they are saying, why waste our bullets so much? Let's just relax. They will soon starve to death. So, you need to have a little bit of a better understanding of what is happening in the, uh, in the world. Before you start, you know, uh, demonizing yourselves. We are very good at demonizing our country. We are very good at demonizing our leaders, regardless of who they are. It, because even Edgar Lungu, you demonize him. Even HHU demonize him. Come on, let's relax. Why are we so prone to attacking uh, uh, ourselves and each other? Why are we so susceptible to receive negativity on, on our own. When they say bad things about uh, this country, you feel good. But believe you me, Zambia is not as bad in them ever. Zambia is not as bad compared to some of these countries. I don't want to mention countries because I know that I'm watched by so many people. Some of them may be coming from those countries. But again, I'll, I'll challenge you to say, scan around and see which African country is doing far much better than Zambia? Scan around. Of course there are. I'm not saying all countries are doing bad. No. I'm just telling you that a number of countries are having challenges. And Zambia is not so badly off. That is on an economic front. You may not like this, but this is a fact. And truthfully speaking, as much as I've got issues with the UPND by the fact that they want me to prison, but as much as I have that, I can tell you that HH, you are better off giving him a benefit of doubt. Why do I say you are better off giving him a benefit of doubt? He's not the best. That certainly is not the best. Certainly he's not the best. But the benefit of doubt is that I know for sure that HH is working so hard to try and turn around things. I know he's trying to work, to work so hard to try and turn around things. Unfortunately, sometimes I feel he doesn't have a good team. Some of these people who are in HH's offices, they don't know what they are doing. I can assure you, they don't know what they are doing. They don't know their job. They have gotten the positions, but they don't know their job. And good heavens, 
you should be praying to God that one day nshaka piribuke bikeje tu nkapiribuka I will come here I'll be mentioning names mukapapa mukapapa and I'll be giving you evidence why I'll be calling out your names there will come a time there will come a time and some of you who think to say ah no no that time will not come because he's going to prison <laughs> wait wait just wait I'm telling you there will come a time here when I'll be calling out names and I can assure you that whatever you are thinking to say I'll be imprisoned, I won't be imprisoned during the time of elections. Even if you even if you, you 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 describe a sentence, you convict me on whatever case, you convict me. I am not going to be in prison during the time of elections, and you must know that. So some of you who are being silly, some of you who are being silly, I'm warning you. You should know you will face me during the time of elections. I will come to do politics during the time of elections because, of course, the time of elections, I must do politics. So, and I will talk about that, but before I go to the politics, I am, I am saying that Haka in the he seems to be lacking people that can do the job. People that can do the job. A number of people in UPND government, they don't know their job. They don't know. They don't know their job. And my, 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 my tongue is salivating to you know to mention to call out some of these names they don't know you have the jobs but you don't know your job you don't know your job you are doing nothing you are not helping that hacker in the he is busy moving around moving around moving around but a lot of you you don't know your job you don't know there will come a time when I'll be calling out your names and I'll be giving evidence. And you have no time. You have no time to bring up to my fake charges. Because even if you bring those to my fake charges, you would be gone still. The moment I call out your name, you will be gone. Anyway, some of the challenges, for example, when you talk about agriculture, agriculture is, is in big problems. Eh? Is in big problems. And some of the problems are a policy problem. Some of the problems are a policy problem. Yes, somebody wrote here to say, no, they sold out the maze. Yes, but for how long are we going to talk about the maze that was sold in 2021, honestly? Are we still going to be talking about, no, they sold out the maze, they sold out the maze. Are you telling me that the maze that was there in 2021, even if they had not sold it, it would have lasted us up to this time? I mean, that is being too basic in, in, in thinking. That is being too basic. Yes, they sold out the maze, but come on. The fact is that that maze would not have lasted up to now. That maze would not have cushioned us because, uh, uh, because of uh, the, the, the drought that we are facing. Of course, the issues of fertilizer became, uh, became, uh, became topical. But then again, if you remember the issue of fertilizer, it was hampered by the war in Ukraine. Ukraine-Russia war. It affected us. And unfortunately, I think there are that some of you have a new PND. You don't know your job. Because these problems, you are failing to explain to people so that they can understand. The fertilizer issue was hampered by the Ukraine war. It was, they, we had problems there. And now, it is now that we have opened these uh, factories which are going to be giving us fertilizer. So at least there is, there is hope. There is hope, especially in the next season. There is hope. Unfortunately, this year, we are now faced with this drought. This drought, you can't blame this drought on anyone. You can't blame it on anyone. But certainly, this drought is going to affect us. It's going to affect us. And these are issues that the UPND government should be talking about to prepare people. To prepare people that look where we are going. I mean, there are portholes. There are portholes where we are going so that people, you know, have it in mind. But by UPND, I mean, I don't know what you are doing. I don't know. I don't know. I am not saying this. I'm saying this for the good of my country because perception is very important. Perception is very important. 
The narrative is very important. What we say about this country will affect our direct investment. It will affect our tourism. The dollar that you are talking about is affected by the perception that we give this country. And no one doesn't... Now, a lot of you people by UPND, you don't need to... You, do, you don't seem to understand that. You are busy quarreling with, with Edgar Lungu, lying... Hey, Edgar Lungu... Uh, hey, Edgar Lungu is saying he's removing... Uh, uh, he's, he's going to remove a free education. Why are you worried about Edgar Lungu and he's talking about free education? When you have got a bigger problem that is before you, and the bigger problem that is before you is the problems that are in agriculture and the impact on the Zambian people. That is what you're supposed to be looking at. You're supposed to be statesmen. You're supposed to be the ruling government. Not entering into petty politics. Of hey, Edgar Lungu is going to remove whatever, whatever. Vala ikuta wantu. Bushe vala ikuta. That, uh, uh, this one was talking about this or this one. A lot, of, a lot of you started talking about it. You spoke about that. It became a narrative. And each time Edgar Lungu says something, you all gather on it like bees on honey. You all gather on it like bees on honey. Instead of explaining things to the Zambian people. Preparing, because it's not just political that I'm talking about. When you, when, you, when you tell people what is currently going on and you give them what you are expecting, people are able to plan. And when I talk about people, I'm not just talking about these young boys and girls on social media. I'm talking about the business community. I'm talking about the international community. These things have to be put in perspective. But do you? You are so petty. Today you are busy arguing about uh, somebody who has been caught with drugs. No, he's a driver for Ed Garungu. No, he's a driver for... So what? If he's a, if he's a driver for Ed Garungu, if he's not, so what? So what? Look at the degrees. Do you know how many degrees it is? Eh? Huh? Look at the sun, it is hot. How many degrees is it? What is the impact of that on the, on the, on the, on, on the crop? What does this, what does today's heat, what does it, what does it, how does it affect tomorrow? Prepare people. That way people will sensitize people. People will, 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 will plan. People will plan. If you tell people we are going through, we are going to, to have a hard time. So spare whatever you have. People will not be careless. Some of them will try to, 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 to save. Some of them will start planning how they are going to manage tomorrow. Business communities are going to do the same. It is important it is very important to disseminate information to the public. It is very important. Information is power. Information is power. We are having challenges. So in agriculture, really, there is so much that needs to be done. And not just being empty, you know, a, 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 a optimistic, baselessly optimistic. Because, you know, like the ministry... The Ministry of Agriculture tend to give so much hope, you know, when things are bad. And it's not your problem that there is a drought. Just explain to people properly. Just explain to people properly. And those of you who are on the opposition side, it is not good for you to start making political capital out of a natural calamity. It is not right. But you are busy, busy talking about the drought. Hey, what? what? Come on. I mean, we may not like the man. We may not like the man, but come on, let's not sabotage him. Because when we sabotage him, we are sabotaging the country. Whether you like it or not, the guy is the one that is leading this country. So a bit of support, a bit of good, uh, whatever, positivity on him, we will actually help this country. So, 
We have those problems in agriculture. We have problems with fuel. Fuel problems, you know, people get excited. Hey, this month we will see. We will see. We will see. You are being petty. You are being petty. Let's look at where fuel is coming. Let's look at the global demand of fuel. Let's look at what solutions can we have? What solutions can we have so that we can survive the, 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 the economic challenges coming in as a result of fuel? Fuel is on high demand on the global economy at the moment for various reasons. America, they were trying to come up with to do fuel plants and start generating fuel by themselves. That those projects have stalled. They have gone back to the Middle East, putting more pressure on the Middle East. They need fuel. Other countries also need fuel. Wars are going on. They need fuel. So, I mean, these are things that we need to look at. And people need to be told, instead of just the simplifying it to how much will fuel be this, this month. Maybe people need to understand where fuel is coming from and what challenges are there and what are the possible solutions that we could have. You know that in some countries people resorted to be, instead of driving, instead of going to, for work, you know, everyone jumping in, in, in his or her vehicle, there were, in some countries, people were being, you know, um, mobilized or sensitized to start using one vehicle to go to, uh, to go for work. You know, in the certain area, instead of this, you know, you have got 10 houses and 10 vehicles going into town. Of course, this was on climatic change. You know, maybe these people, five of them could be in one vehicle, they go. And maybe you could also be talking about that to mitigate on the high demand of fuel. Because the more, the higher the demand, the higher the prices. Maybe we could be looking at how can we save fuel. Instead of just complaining, ah, fuel ya dura maningi, fuel ya dura maningi. Fuel ya dura maningi. I mean, you could use other means. You could use other means. I saw Simon, whatever, the, that, that uh, uh, Simon Mulenga the other day, Right, you know, on a bicycle to say fuel ya dula, and he did it as a joke. But from my point of view, that is one solution. That is one solution. So, what are we doing as a country instead of just complaining, complaining, complaining? But then, I am not just blaming the citizens, I am also looking at the, the, the leaders. The leaders must be able to come up with some initiatives, initiatives that will bring positive living, positive living which can mitigate on some of these problems that we, are, that we are facing. We have problems in the mines. We have problems in the mines. Look, and I blame the government. I blame the government on this one. We are having, a, you know, the exchange rate going very high, you know. The exchange going very high because we are not getting what we are supposed to get from the mines. We are not, currently we are not getting what we are supposed to get from the mines, which cushions on the exchange rate. There is so much dollar flight out of our country. Dollar flight through the minerals that are going out and the money is not coming back. Money is not coming back. We have our, right now the trucks are loading, they are going out of the country, they are going out of the country with tons and tons of our copper. But no dollar is coming back into our country because that money, when they sell, or wherever they sell, it goes into different countries. It cushions or it strengthens their currencies instead of strengthening our, our currency. Surely at this point in time, government would be coming up with something that uh, we, you know, with agreements with some of these minds to say, hello, guys, we are in problems now. We have given you this... Uh, a, this deal, but this deal is not helping us and it might kick us out of government and when we are kicked out of government you might also lose. So maybe at this point in time, can you uh, can we suspend this deal or can you help us in this way 
so that we can have, you know, dollars circulating in the economy. From there, you can talk about money in the treasury. Money in the treasury, the government is, done, is not receiving so much money. We, I think last year we had a situation where ZRA could not meet its target. We have never had it in a long time, but we had it recently. Because the taxes, where they are supposed to collect taxes, I mean, the sources are, 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 are dwindling. So, they are not, ZRA does not manufacture money, they collect taxes. And they can only collect taxes where money has been made. Now, if there is no money in the economy, how can ZRA succeed? Which brings me to the government, say, to the private sector. The private sector, it is hard in the private sector. Businesses are collapsing. Businesses are collapsing. Zambians are, are failing to do business. I went to borrow money recently. I went to borrow money to one of the... I, I went to borrow money from Kwacha Loans. I went to borrow money from Kwacha Loans. And I was told that the rate of default is very high. The rate of default is very high. And they are reluctant to give loans. And indeed, they gave me a loan and I'm about to default because I don't have money. I don't have money. Yes, I'm selling roofing sheets. And thank God for all of you who are coming to buy roofing sheets. I'm really grateful. Please come and buy roofing sheets. That is my only survival. That is my only survival. Come and buy roofing sheets from us. The profits are very minimal. You make two kwacha, three kwacha, two kwacha, three kwacha. So to make 1,000 kwacha is, is a challenge. And I am sweating right now because I've got debt, like I'm telling you, and I'm going to default because the business is slow. And it is slow because other people don't have money. Other people don't have money. It's a challenge. We are having serious challenges in terms of business. Because, of course, even government is not making so much money. And it's not making so much money because government as the big, big contractor, big buyer, big service, provide, a, a service consumer, they are not as consuming as much. Because they don't have the money. We need the money for the business to thrive. Of course, this issue of PF, UPND also has come in where some people are just being labeled, ah, no, this one is PF, and you put them off. There are so many people that have been put off the government, off the business list, because they are deemed to be PF. I don't think this is right. Trust me, this is not right. You know, blacklisting people based on political lines, it's not good. Because when whoever you think is PF, when you give him money, it is not that he's going to eat that money with the PF only. This person will go in a club. This person will take a, a, you know, a side chick. This person, whatever. So, it is not the right way to control the economy or to control the politics. Denying you know, payments to people based on you know, uh, uh, the suspicion of them be belonging to whichever political party. And believe you me, anyone, he could be PF if he's, a, if he's a businessman and you are treating him well. Believe you me, he will swing the other way. And he will tell other people to swing the other way. This idea of labeling others PF and putting them aside does not help politically. What helps is giving them business, giving as many people as possible business so that they can go in the community and make the community a, a liquid and that's when they will say, this government is doing well. So it is not good what you are doing. The business community is really stressed. It's really stressed. And I'm asking you to say, please, you know, relax some of these bottlenecks, some of these uh, 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 squeezes that you have put, you know, uh, relax them. Relax them. So pretty much... And you know, when the business community is not doing well, of course, young people will not be able to find employment. A lot of people are not getting employed because businesses are closing down. Employment is only created in the private sector. 
And if you are killing the private sector, employment will be scarcity. You need to create the, uh, you need to revitalize the, the, the private sector. And that is how you're going to create employment. I have started my Kalitu Kantemba there. I have employed people. There are people who are working there. And they have got families. Now, if I'm not doing well, those people will not be paid. And eventually, some of them will lose jobs. You're killing the economy. You're killing the economy. You're not killing Shurifa Tayari. But look at many other people that are behind Shurifa Tayari. Anyway, this is so... In summary, I'm just saying that... Uh, the economy is not really bad because Haka Inde Ichirima has employed bad policies. I don't think so. I don't think so. Of course, they they overly dependent on the IMF. They overly dependent on IMF and they politicized the business community and, of course, made it more stringent. Of course, they're trying to fight corruption, but at the end of the day, you know, uh, the, 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 the stringence that they have put around doing the, the, the environment of doing business has become it very, very difficult for people you know, to, uh, to do business. So they can do better, yes, they can do better, but over and above everything, I think we should be objective enough to say we are going through a global uh, economic recession where a number of things are a challenge. Prices have gone up in many countries, in many parts of the world. Fuel is a challenge in many parts of the, the world, in many countries, fuel is expensive. So let us be realistic. Money is also a challenge in, in many parts of this country. It's not about HH. It's not about HH. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.